welcome to this session. First of all, let's understand what is Amazon FXX and then let's start off with it. So using FSX, we can launch and run high performing file systems with just a few clicks while avoiding tasks like provisioning hardware, configuring software or taking backups. So it's pretty much the same as EFS, but there are some other features which FSX can do. So file system X has the capability of connecting to Windows file server. Also, it has an option for Luster. So we'll check out what is Amazon FSX for files, Windows file server and Amazon FSX for Luster later. Now let's understand what FSX provides us. So FSX is basically a high performing file system which provides these two features. Now, why should you use FSX? First of all, it's simple and fully managed. Uh, it's pretty simple to create. It's very, very simple to connect. Fast delivery, it's faster than EFS. And if you want to connect it to a Linux system, you can go for Lustre. Or if you want to connect it to a Windows system, there is no option in EFS at all. But in FSX, you have an option. Highly available and durable. The data in this particular file system is always available and that is provided to you by the AWS SLA. And then pay only for the resources you used. This is for all the AWS services. Secure and compliant, this is for all the AWS services. Easy integration with other AWS services. Again, this is for all the other AWS services. If you're using an AWS service by providing a role to another AWS service for accessing this, uh, that enables that service to access this service, for example. If you're providing a role to an EC2 instance to access FSX, EC2 instances can then access FSX. Until then, they'll not be able to. Okay, so Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. So FSX for Windows File Server, a native Microsoft Windows file system so that you can move your Windows-based applications to this shared storage. For example, it will connect like a Windows file system which in which you can store your applications, in which you can have your files, in which you can have your videos, audio, whatever file you want to, and it is compatible with all the Microsoft products as well. So it is built on a Windows server and that is the reason uh, it is compatible with all the Microsoft products. Okay, so now, Obviously, there is no other go if you're using AWS and if you want to connect your file system, shared file system to your Windows server. In that case, the only option you can go to is FSX and it's a really great option. Now you get full support for the SMB protocol, Windows NTFS, Microsoft Active Directory integration. So all of these are Microsoft's uh, product. So again, you can see Active Directory is required for Azure as well. Uh, they use Active Directory in Azure. And also if you are using Active Directory, FSX is pretty good. It gives you full support for that. And also FSX uses SSD for fast performance. It uses uh, standard disk, so you will not have any other issues. It uses SSD and it will provide you great fast performance. Now, features of AWS FSX for Windows File Server. So as I told you, native Windows uh, compatibility. So FSX supports all Windows versions starting from Windows 7. So Windows 7 and then Windows 8, if anybody is using it and then Windows 10. Yeah, so you can connect it to Windows 10 as well. And that's the latest version right now. And it is compatible with all of those versions. Then broadly accessible, you can connect your file system to Amazon EC2. So EC2, uh, you have a Windows server, right? You can launch a Windows server on EC2 and connect it to it. Or if you have a Windows server on Amazon Workspaces, uh, you can connect it with it. Or if you want to connect it on VMware Cloud on AWS, you can do that as well. So it's fully managed. It's very simple to launch, very simple to connect to Windows. Built on SSD storage, designed for fast and consistent delivery, also provides up to two gigabytes of throughput per file system. So you can see that it's really fast. It can write and read really fast. Okay. So what are the use cases of this file system? So first lift and shift application workloads and then software development environments. So in lift and shift, Windows based applications and workloads such as enterprise, uh, you have enterprise resource planning systems, customer relation management systems, and also custom built applications, which you have by in dotnet applications custom built dotnet applications which you created so all of this requires shared file storage and you can basically use fsx for this purpose and then coming to software development environments development environments include source code and build repositories that reside on shared file storage to support many developers working on the same projects let's say there are 10 developers working on a single project if they had to upload every single time, for example, if a developer is asking for the file and this developer is sending it to, uh, developer one is sending it to developer two. In that case, all the other developers will not have that file and there will be an inconsistency in development. So having a shared file storage and storing all your source code in a single location will help you in a lot of ways and developers can basically take the files from there 
and there won't be any inconsistency because whenever there's a new file you can upload it to the shared file system and how does it work so it's pretty simple first you create your fsx file system in aws once you do it you have to configure with windows once you connect it with windows uh, you can see access your file shares from your application servers and end user compute instances so once you connect it, you will be able to access them. It's pretty simple while doing the uh, demos, you can understand it. Run your applications, use Amazon FSx file systems to share file data across application servers and end users. Okay, so you can use it for multiple purposes. One is running your applications. Support clients access methods and environments. Clients, it works on EC2 instances, workspaces, AppStream 2.0 instances and VMware cloud on AWS. So it works on all of this. Access methods, you can access it using its domain name, domain name servers names, and then distributed file system namespaces. So there are two access methods which you can use it. Then environments, you can use it for your on-premise environment, that is your local uh, server, which needs a file system, or you can use it for an AWS account in which you have an EC2 instance, which is a Windows server. Okay, so there's also a failover process guys for Windows file servers. So there's a multi availability zone file system available. So when you select it, it will start the failover process automatically if any of the below conditions prevail. So if any of those below conditions, which I have provided here, if any of that happens, the multi AC file system will start the failover process automatically. Okay, so first an availability zone outage occurs. If one of the availability zone goes down, it will automatically launch or it will automatically create a file system in another availability zone, which is ready to go. The preferred file server becomes unavailable. So if you have a preferred file server as the primary server, and if that is unavailable, it will use a secondary server as the main one. So it will just fail over to the second one. And then the preferred file server undergoes planned maintenance. So when the primary file server is under maintenance, the secondary file server will be used for the time being. And once it comes back up, it will be the failover will return to the primary uh, file system. So it's pretty simple. The failover process is pretty straightforward. We can see that. Okay. Now what exactly happens when a failover process starts? First of all, when a failing over from a file system server to another, the new file system will start serving all read and write requests. Once the resources are all available in the required subnet, FSX automatically goes back to the preferred file server. Third, for a failover to complete, it will take around 30 seconds from when it detected a failure. Okay, let's start from the first point. When a failing over, that is the failover process, from a file system server to another, from one server to another occurs, the new file system will start serving all read and write requests. For example, when the primary server goes unavailable and the secondary server is available, so when it's failing over, all the incoming read requests and write requests will now start going to the secondary file server. And once all the resources are available in the required subnet, the FSX uh, automatically goes back to the preferred file server. That is when this primary server comes back, when it is back live, and when it is available, in that case, it will automatically shift the uh, failover process from the secondary server to the primary server itself. So for a failover to complete from the primary to the secondary or from the secondary to the primary, whatever it is, it will take around 30 seconds to complete from when it detected a failure. Okay, so this is the failover process. It's pretty straightforward. When one goes down, the other will be available. When it other goes down, the other will be available. If both of it goes down, another server will be created. That's what we saw here. If an, it automatically create one, if you have a multi AZ deployment. Okay. So we've seen windows server guys. It's pretty straightforward. You create a file system connected to your windows systems. The windows system can be an AC2 instance, or it can be, it can be an AC2 instance, a workspace instance. It can be VMware on cloud and you can connect it to you using its DNS name as well. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. The failover process is also straightforward. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides online AWS certification training in partnership with Future Skills, mentored by industry experts. The course link is given in the description below. Now, let's continue with the session. Amazon FSx for Luster. First of all, FSx for Luster makes it very easy to launch and run the world's most popular file system. So Luster is a really popular file system which is used by a lot of organizations. So what is the Luster file system? Well, the Luster file system is an open source, parallel file system that supports many requirements of leadership class HPC simulation environments, which basically means the Luster file system is used by a lot of high performance computing simulation environments. That basically means computers 
with a really uh, high powered CPUs are using Luster as their file system, then you can understand how fast reads and writes are in Luster. So Amazon FSx came up with a Windows file server. Also it came up with Luster file server so that you can connect it to any tool or any instance or any server you want to. Now, what are the features of FSx Luster? First, it's a most popular high performance file system. It's even faster than EFS. It's the world's most popular file system as well as world's most fastest file system available. And multiple deployment options. You can deploy it to Windows, you can deploy it to Linux. A seamless integration with your Amazon S3 data. You can connect it with S3 and get the data from S3 as well or export the data from the Luster file system into S3. And data accessible to other AWS services so you can allow other AWS services to access the data in the FSx file system for Luster as well. You can connect it to your on-premise system and you can access it from your on-premise systems as well. And simple and fully managed is for all the AWS services. So it was for FSx for Windows file server. It is also the same for Luster. So the main two features over here are the first one is the most popular high performance file system. Second, multiple deployment options. EFS can only be deployed on Linux that is on Ubuntu, Red Hat, whatever Linux operating systems are available. Basically, you can only use it on Windows, but Luster can be connected to various uh, operating systems, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, now you can integrate it with S3, which makes it easier to process data sets. When linked with S3, Luster shows all the S3 objects as files and any change made will reflect in the S3 bucket too. If you connect your FSx file system for Luster to your Amazon S3 bucket, in that case, all the objects within the bucket will be shown in the Luster file system as well and vice versa. So in this case, what happens is whenever you make a change to these objects in your file system, that will be reflected in the S3 bucket as well. Yeah, so when you make a change in the S3 bucket, that will be reflected on the file system as well. If you have a large uh, data set stored in S3, you can basically access it in real time using the FSx for Luster file system. Now, what are the use cases? Uh, first of all, machine learning is one and media processing and transcoding. So you can see this, the use cases for Luster are machine learning and media processing and transcoding. And these require really high performance computing systems. And that's why they're using Luster. So ML workloads use massive amounts of training data. Multiple instances need to process training data simultaneously. So a shared file storage is very helpful. And what else is better than a shared file storage, which is also compatible with high performance systems. So machine learning requires a high performance system and Luster can handle that. So that's why we can use Luster. If you're going to uh, basically use training data sets, which are very massive for running your training on your machine learning algorithm. Next comes media processing and transcoding. Media workflows like video rendering and visual effects need the compute and storage resources to handle the massive amounts of data being created. For example, in YouTube, if you're trying to click on something and the video starts streaming, there's a huge process running in the background, background, right? So the same thing, let's say you are trying to create your own streaming platform and you're going to transform and modify and process your video before it's going to play. So to store all the temporary files, to store the video which is created by that processing, so that video should be stored in a place, right? So for that, you can use FSx for Luster because it's really fast and you can easily write into it. So these two are the major use cases. There are still a lot of use cases which you go, which you can research and learn about. Okay, now let's look at the pricing of the Windows file server and the FSx file server. So first let's look into the uh, pricing of Windows file server. So this is for the North Virginia region. So this varies with the region as well. There won't be bigger differences. There will be smaller differences, but still. Okay, so first, for SSD storage, for single AZ deployment, you have 0 0.130 per GB per month. And multi-AZ deployment is 0 0.23 dollars per GB per month. So this is what you'll have to look into. If it is a single AZ deployment for practice, it'll be very cheap. And if it is a multi-AZ deployment, it'll be more. And yeah, so if we go with SSD, the uh, transfer rate will be faster. The throughput will be faster. Over here in HDD, uh, it's 0 0.013. So it's much cheaper than SDD, uh, sorry, SSD. And it's much cheaper in multi-AZ deployment as well, SSD. And okay, then throughput capacity is cheaper in single AZ deployment and it's higher in multi-AZ deployment because we obviously know in single AZ deployment, there is one, it, they're launching file systems in only one availability zone. In multi-AZ, it's in multiple availability zones. Backup storage, if you need backup, if you want to take up snapshots, it'll cost you 0.5 GB, uh, sorry, 0.05 
dollars per gb per month same thing goes with single and multi ag because it's just snapshots so a pricing example okay so let's assume you want 10 tb of general purpose file share data using hdd storage so it's not ssd it's hdd storage you want this in north virginia region so based on typical deduplication savings of 50 to 60% you provision a 5 tb multi ag file system with 16 mbps of throughput capacity assume you have an average backup storage of 5 tb during the month now let's calculate the pricing for this so storage you are choosing 5 tb okay and it's multi ag deployment remember that so over here we uh, you can see the multi ag deployment price right for hdd over here you can see the price which are which we are multiplying it's the multi ag deployments price so 5 tb into hdd's multi ag deployment price is equal to 128 dollars per month throughput is 16 mbps and over here you can see it is 4.5 dollars per mbps per month it's 16 so it's 72 dollars per month backup we have choose we are choosing 5 tb that basically means 5 tb into 0.05 dollars per gb per month so it's 256 dollars per month so the total cost would be 456 dollars or it would be 0.045 uh, dollars per gb for month of 10 tb of data so for 10 tb of data it will cost you 0.045 dollars per gb of data per month the total cost is 456 dollars now let's look at the pricing for luster and over here there are four options which you get one is scratch one is persistent and there are other two persistent options if this scratch it's 200 mbps baseline uh, 1.3 gigabytes burst that basically means at any point in time you'll at least have 200 mbps uh, sorry 200 megabits uh, per second read or write throughput and if there is a if there is a need for increasing the throughput then it can go up to 1.3 gigabits uh, per second persistent same options uh, other persistent 100 and 1.3 50 and 1.3 so uh, persistent 200 is the most expensive one 0.29 dollars per gb per month scratch is 0.14 dollars persistent is 0.19 dollars and persistent 50 mbps is 0.14 dollars okay so another pricing example assume you have a scratch file system in the us north virginia region uh, which has been provisioned with 4800 gb of storage capacity and you spin up your file system for an 8 hr workload every day so basically for 30 days a month you are switching on your system file system for 8 hrs a day so it would be 8 hrs into 30 days and you are having a 4800 gb of storage capacity and you are launching a scratch file system so over here scratch file system costs 2.14 dollars per month per gb coming over here so the pricing of scratch divided by 30 that is the month divided by 24 hours so it's going to cost you 0.000194 dollars per gb per hour so now the total storage you have taken is 4800 gb so total storage into per gb hour cost into 8 hours into 30 days so it will cost you 224 dollars for this particular setup so guys this is just an example uh, you can calculate all of your aws services like this by taking an example like this or if you're actually using them you can take the pricing and calculate the pricing which you will be receiving before starting off creating those in uh, aws services we are going to look into a demo on amazon fsx for windows file server so first launch a windows instance in your aws ec2 management console then we'll have to create an aws managed active directory so microsoft active directory with the aid of the active directory we'll be connecting the fsx file system to our windows server and let's open the console okay so before starting off with the file system over here i have my windows machine so i'll just start it just a quick it for guys intellipad provides online aws certification training in partnership with future skills mentored by industry experts the course link is given in the description below now let's continue with the session and okay so i have the rdp so i'll just download it once again and let's connect it and then i have my active directory service set up so to set up your directory get a domain name from freenom or use an existing domain name provide aws managed microsoft ad next click on standard edition provide your dns name over here so whatever dns name and then provide the admin password so you should have special characters capital letters and numbers so i'm just providing one similar to that and then once provided click on next 
and then here provide the subnets or you just you can leave it at no preference next that's it so you have a 30 day limited trial so you can use directory service if you are new to aws and this 30 day limited trial starts when you create your first azure active directory uh, not azure active directory microsoft active directory okay so when you start off with that you will get your 30 day limited trial and within 30 for 30 days using this is completely free after that you will start getting built okay so i already created one so you can see over here i use this so i have this domain name so i'm using this next i have my ec2 instance yeah so i, I just started it right now okay let me download the rdp file opening it so i have the password over here so this is the key i provided while launching so what you'll have to do is you will have to provide the sorry you'll have to provide the pem file to decrypt it then decrypt password copy your password paste it over here click on remember me so after this whenever you want to connect you don't need to provide your password clicking on yes okay so this will open my uh, windows instance so my windows instance is open guys so let me just minimize this going to amazon fsx now let's start off with the file creation now clicking on create file system windows file server and next so first you'll have to provide your file system name uh, so the process is pretty simple for example i'm just providing my file system name as windows fs then if you want a deployment type of multi kz you can provide that i'm going to go with single availability zone so just provide that and then i'm going to choose ssd and 32 gb of storage is the minimum so i'm providing that and i'm going to leave the throughput capacity at 16 mbps you can increase or decrease it from here and then choose the vpc the uh, security group if you want to uh, actually provide exactly uh, which vpc you want which security group you want or just leave all of that as default and then it's going to be aws managed microsoft active directory as i told you create this click on choose directory the directory is over here come down click next review it once and click on create file system so once this gets created then we'll be able to basically start off with the process of connecting it to our windows system okay so before that let me just open control panel and keep because the system would be pretty slow okay so network and internet network and sharing change adapter settings okay so the thing is let me introduce you to this so first of all go to control panel go to network and internet go to network and sharing center go to change adapter settings and you'll have to go to properties of this and you'll have to change the ipv4 address to the ipv4 address you will get from this particular windows uh, file system so once you get that we can start off with the process because right now we do not have the ip address once we get the ip address we can start off with it so let's wait until the ip address is available because until then we cannot proceed with the demo okay guys it's still showing it's creating but i think the ip address and the endpoint is available you can see it over here okay and also the dns name so let's start off with uh, connecting them okay so let's open the windows machine and i've, I've already shown you how to get here now do a right click go to properties and over here you will get an ipv4 option we'll have to double click on that uh, but don't get frustrated while doing this because the server at the beginning will take a lot of time so this is the one do a double click and over here so basically it will be like this obtain dns server address automatically but you'll have to provide use the following dns server address then get this ip address paste it over here okay okay and then okay so we've provided the ip address for our file system now close this now go to uh, go back basically go to control panel home or just go over here then go to system and security and then go to system so the thing is we'll have to connect the active directory right so to do that we'll have to connect it through system so through system we'll have to actually provide the domain name so we have the domain name that is intellipad.ga 
okay so over here go to computer name go to change go to domain and provide the actual domain name so it's intelipad.ga and hit ok um active directory domain controller for the domain could not be contacted so there is some issue so i think it's still getting created let's check that yes it is still getting created but my domain is active and available so i don't know why it is not able to communicate with that let's check the inbound rules okay let me check the inbound rules once so only rdp is allowed let's allow all traffic okay anywhere save rules now closing this now i just wanted to check for outbound rules as well because uh, it will also send requests outside of the server so outbound rules so all traffic is allowed in outbound rules okay so now let's go ahead over here let's try this once again i think it'll still throw the error okay let's just check it out okay so the mistake uh, was not this i found out the mistake so i am entering the wrong ip address guys i am sorry so we'll have to enter the ip address of the directory service because we are connecting the directory service to the file system so what happens is the windows server will contact active directory active directory will lead us to this file system so for that we'll have to use these ip addresses over here okay so now let me copy this ip going over here we close this we'll have to go back to network and internet go to network and sharing and go over to change adapter settings so same process i'm just going to ipv4 now okay again double click on that go over here so now change the ip address of this so i think i changed one 162 i'll have to change the alternate ip as well changing it and clicking on ok okay so this is done so let's close this go back system and security and where is it system and going to advanced system settings or system properties and once you enter system property properties go to computer name and click on change domain so now we can provide the active directory domain name because we have entered the right ip address okay so right now it'll ask for the username and password and this is the username and password which you provided while creating this and over here so username would be this intellipat would be the username so this is the username password will not be provided here you should remember that so i'm providing my username and my password i'm not going to tell that so i'm just entering that and clicking on ok and it will show a pop-up that it is connected successfully so if that is provided then we can establish the connection okay the following error attempting to join the domain intellipat ga the username or password is incorrect okay so username is intellipat the password exactly don't re let's reset user password uh, username is intellipat new password is going to be i'm going to provide this just a quick hit for guys intellipat provides online aws certification training in partnership with future skills mentored by industry experts the course link is given in the description below now let's continue with the session and reset password um intellipad does not exist so what is the username okay, what is the username i provided okay i think the user name is admin let's check out that and reset password okay so admin was the username okay because i didn't remember providing any username so over here now i'm providing the username and password
okay welcome to the intellipad.ge domain so now the connection is successful now just provide okay and just close this okay so we can restart it now or we can restart it later i'm just restarting it now okay so let it restart let's just look into now how to connect the file system so to connect the file system it's pretty simple select the file system click on attach so we've manually done this part that is connecting our active directory so the second part is just copying this and i'm just going to open notepad over here so you'll have to provide an appropriate drive name okay so if your drive name is already used up you cannot use that drive name for example c drive d drive will already be used so you cannot use that over here i'm going to provide h and i'm copying this and closing it so i think it's the windows server will be available right now let's i'll download the no not required let me open the remote desktop connection again connect so these two were the previous ones so you can see these have different ip addresses so i'll just delete this okay initiating remote connection it'll take some time so let's wait the thing is i think it's still rebooting so let's wait until it gets rebooted okay now i tried again so i think now the connection is going in okay let's so once it gets connected we can use the so we can use this to connect our windows file share so let's let's wait until the session opens it's configuring the remote session right now and it's opened it okay so let's wait until we get the windows uh, system let me just do this okay so the instance uh, is logged in so now let me open the command prompt okay command prompt i'm opening it so once command prompt opens we'll just have to copy and paste this so i'll just copy this and command prompt is opened so two command prompts are opened let me just close this go back over here okay so command prompt is available and i just copied it and pasted it over there and enter username for this particular file system so the username which i provided i nearly forgot it let me go over here okay so the dns name is this the ip address is this the username is i think it's admin password so i think the network password is incorrect okay let me check here once so after this it's asking for a password so while i created i gave a password administration okay let me just try okay so the password is incorrect again okay again there is an error so i totally forgot what was the file system's password okay so this is the username and okay, let me try this this might be it and again this is also wrong what if it's root okay so i totally forgot the password so the only option is that we'll have to uh, basically reconnect this by creating a new windows server uh, windows file system so that will take a lot of time so what i'm going to do is um, let's try this once again provided the letter properly okay so this is for installing in amazon ec2 or workspaces or vmware cloud and over here so let me create a file system and single az 32 gb same next the thing is we did not give any password or any uh, okay let's try that
Okay, I did not provide any username into the username for this. Let me just provide the same. System with 86. Okay. Okay, password is wrong again. Let me provide admin. No, no. Let's try with root. Okay, let's provide telepath. So even this is wrong. So this is the directory name. This is the Windows file server's name. Okay, so we'll have to provide the password for this and what it is. That's, that's what I forgot. Okay guys, I think we've done this. Let me just create one more. Let's try to connect it. Okay, so there is no where we provide an ID and a password. I don't think that is necessary to connect. Okay, I think I have the solution. Okay, so I think first we'll have to provide our domain name. So once again, let me do one thing. Let me clear it. Okay, so let's start fresh and let me provide this. Okay. Okay, so first to provide the username, we'll have to provide the uh, domain name so under domain name it's admin so sorry invalid username so admin is the username so hit enter okay sorry one more mistake yes we have one more mistake so over here i am providing my username slash admin my username so domain name slash username then i'm providing the yes so the command completed successfully so the error was we'll have to provide the domain name over here and then we'll have to provide the username and password so guys it's completed successfully let's check it out let me open over here we'll have to go to network okay sorry this pc yeah so under this pc you can see the share is being connected in h drive so that's it guys this is the demo this is the end of the demo so i don't know why i created this i'll just delete this so again deleting is also straightforward you'll just have to provide the id of the file system okay guys we've completed the demo for windows file server just a quick hit for guys intellipad provides online aws certification training in partnership with future skills mentored by industry experts the course link is given in the description below so guys, we have come to the end of the session. If you have any doubts, please put down in the comment section below. We will try to answer it as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.